Hello lovely people and welcome to another video. So today I am talking about all the books that I have bought recently. Now a small disclaimer before I get started, um, these have been accumulated over more than a couple of months, I think maybe three or four months that I've been buying these and I'm buying books at a rate that I can't possibly keep up with, um, but books are one of my favourite things to spend money on, it's basically books, beauty products, food and music, the uh, the unholy, what's, what's, it's not Trinity, the unholy four? I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, anyway, I love books, I'm buying them at a truly ridiculous rate that I can't possibly keep up with so let's talk about them oh and also if you're new here I haven't introduced myself properly hello I'm Lauren welcome to my channel make yourself comfortable now let's get into all the books I've been buying lately the first book I want to talk about is a love story for bewildered girls by Emma Morgan now I bought this after hearing it being talked about on the high low and what I've realised is for slightly nerdy bookwormy girls like myself and so many others, bitches love reading. Um, if, if you listen to the high low, that is dangerous because you just, every book that they talk about I want to read. And that was very much the case with this one. I haven't read this yet. This is kind of next on my list. At the moment, I am reading a book called... The Devil in the White City and I think that's by a guy called Eric Larson, I'm looking at it, it's on my desk and that is basically about the serial killer H.H. H. Holmes who had the murder hotel in Chicago which um, the series of American Horror Story with Lady Gaga is based on and I'm reading that, my housemate recommended it and it's insane but it's very good. Anyway, we're not talking about that, we're talking about this. Basically, this is supposed to be told from um, the points of view of three different women and apparently it's incredible. It's about Grace, Annie and Violet and Grace loves a woman, Annie loves a man and Violet isn't... Violet? <laughs> Violet isn't too sure. And basically it's just supposed to be this wonderful love story. I have no idea what to expect from this but I'm really excited to read it and also I love the cover. Now, I know <laughs> that you are not supposed to judge books by their covers. I know that. I have two English literature degrees. I've read a lot of books and I do judge books by their covers. We all do, but tell me that that isn't gorgeous because it is. That is beautiful. Anyway, I'm very excited to read this. Um, I don't really know what to expect from it, but um, I'm very excited should be a good one. Now this book I have literally bought this week and I am so sorry. Oh I've just ruined it. It's brilliant, 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 brilliant by Joel Colby. Um, I love Joel Colby. I am such a fan of his work on Vice, particularly his 5,000 word diatribe. I know that's not the right word but it's the word I'm going with about crisps. Um, so I'm really excited to read this. I did read the chapter that was in The Guardian, which was about him becoming a an orphan by the time he was 25, which was truly, truly heartbreaking. Um, his writing is incredible. It's He has such an amazing ability to move you. He makes you laugh. He is completely ridiculous. And yet he's so incredibly talented that he can make you cry as well. And... I read that chapter um, and I literally by the end of it I was sobbing. I can't imagine what that situation would be like. Um, so I'm very excited to read this. I think I'm going to read this next. Um, this is my problem. I buy so many books. I've literally just said I'm going to be reading a love story for bewildered girls next and now I'm reading brilliant 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 next. I've missed a brilliant sorry. Um, it's just I'm very excited to read this. It will I know it'll be funny. The reviews so far have been fairly phenomenal so that's great for Joel um I just think he's fantastic I love his writing and I'm really excited to get stuck into this the good thing about this is as it's a collection of essays I can dip in and out however that's not how I read I tend to read all at once like if I'm reading a book I'm reading the whole book but um yeah I'm really into essay collections at the moment I think JD Priestley's Delight kind of set me on that path and I'm very excited to read this uh, I just think it'll be fantastic I, l I love Joel's writing I love his um <clears throat> I love his work on Vice like I've said I love it when he does his choose your own adventure articles I love it when he does the whole uh renting in London thing where he basically 
talks about ridiculous flats in London, like one with like four sinks in a very small amount of space, which was the last one I read. It was a while ago. But yeah, very, very, very excited about this. It should be brilliant. Again, this is a book that was talked about on the high low. This is also a book I've been recommended on Instagram a lot, and it is Educated by Tara Westover. Basically, it's a memoir about Tara who was born preparing for the end of days but according to the government she didn't exist she didn't have a birth certificate no school records because she'd never set foot in a classroom and no medical records because her father didn't believe in hospitals and it's basically how she goes to college i can't remember what, she, what blah, blah, blah. i do this in every video i just get ahead of myself and i'm sorry um she goes to i think it's quite a prestigious college she ends up at um i can't remember which one it is but i'm very excited to read this Barack Obama has recommended this to people. Stephen Fry, like it has got some excellent people reading it and saying how great it is. So that must be uh, great for Tara. Um, I'm very excited. That must mean it's fantastic, right? So yeah, this is high on my list of books to read. Next up, we have Brave by Rose McGowan. Now I bought this after listening to Sentimental Garbage where Rose was interviewed and they talked about Under the Tuscan Sun and they did not like that book but they did talk about Rose's book and I just think she is the most interesting woman I think she's incredibly brave as the title suggests um obviously there's a lot of controversy surrounding Rose McGowan and um, particularly when it comes to the Me Too movement and um Harvey Weinstein obviously she is the whistleblower for that um and I think she she addresses it in the podcast. I'll link it below. It's one of the best ones. I've listened to it twice already. It came out on Thursday. And it's just fantastic. Um, and it's, she's saying how she's been portrayed in the media and how awful that has been for her. And I just think I'd really like to know more about her side of things. Obviously, I've seen what I'm meant to be seeing in the media. But I want to know more about what she has to say for herself. And... It's just, I'm really, really excited to read this. I have no idea when that will be. Um, really need to get a wiggle on with that murder book, but very excited for this. And I also think the cover's insane. I love it. It just looks so good. So I, um, I'm really impatient when it comes to books. I know that Amazon is the devil. I've had my dealing with dealings with them today. Not impressed with it at all. Um, but same day delivery is a hard, <laughs> hard thing to resist when you are as impatient as I am and I did get this on same day delivery and I'm very excited to read it I just don't know when that will be soon though again I have no idea when I'm going to read this I don't know when I'm reading any of these I've got thousands of books to read but yeah I still keep buying them on that note an edited life this is probably a book I should prioritize so I can cut down on all of the books I keep buying uh, but this is an edited life by Anna Newton I have been following Anna for about seven years uh, when I first started getting into blogging myself I have been blogging for six um, and I've been following her since about then and I just love her as a person I think she seems really really lovely I think that much likability is hard to fake over a sustained period of time and I just think she's very truly just herself in her videos and this book kind of fit, fits into that so I've been like her capsule wardrobe videos and how organized she is and yeah I definitely need to be both of those things like I need to streamline my life <laughs> so this I should probably prioritize but um I'm just a big fan of the Anna edit and I can't wait to read this. I think it'll be really, really good. It's also beautiful. Like, inside is very pretty. Like, I can't... I don't know if you can see it, but... This colour scheme is... I'm all for it. I love that colour. So, yes, I'm very excited for this. I actually pre-ordered this ages ago. So, I think I've had this since January. And I have read so much, but I haven't got to this yet. But I will. <laughs> I will get to it soon. Oh no! Oh, I've just, I've been piling them up on my desk and they all nearly fell off. Never mind, it's fine. This is another book I came to through um, Sentimental Garbage. Honestly, it is like my top three podcasts. I listen to it all the time, it's amazing. Just listen to it. If you like books, which you're here, you like books, listen to it, it's great. Um, but this is Midnight Chicken and Other Recipes Worth Living For by Ella Risbridger. And it is a memoir crossed with a cookery book. Now, 
I am not a cook. Uh, <laughs> that sounded like, what is that quote? I am not a crook. Richard Nixon sounded a bit like that then, didn't it? Um, this is, I am not in any way a natural cook. I do not have any inclination to cook. I'm not very good at it. I can bake, but I don't really do it a lot. But, um, so I'm not going to use the recipes per se, but I love reading about food. I love food writing. It is just incredible. I think food and things like food, music, love stories, things like that, I think they are just truly an incredible vehicle for storytelling. And I am really excited to read more about this. I know a bit of Ella's story. I read an article in The Guardian about her, I believe it was, and it's basically her partner died of cancer when she was very young and um, I think it, this is basically just how she kind of pulled herself out of depression by cooking. That sounds really reductive and I'm probably not selling it the way I should, but I am really excited to read this. One, I think it is a beautiful, beautiful book. I just do. I think it's gorgeous. Um, so I will read this very soon and report back. Um, but it just says, things to remember, this book has three main morals and I urge you to remember them and apply them liberally. Salt your pasta water, which I do when I cook. If in doubt, butter. Keep going. And it says, Diana Henry said, a moving testimonial to the redemptive, redemptive sorry, power of cooking. Ella Risbridge knows that it offers not just solace, but a map. Cooking can save you. Generous, honest and uplifting. And I mean, that is something I can get on board with. It sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Okay, so we're down to our final two. Thank you for sticking around this long. You obviously love books as much as I do. Let's chat about that, comments and all that below. So this I bought in Foyle's Bookshop, which I'm pretty sure is my favourite place in the world. It's definitely one of my favourite places to go to in London if I'm doing something and want to kill an hour because I could just lose time in there like that. So actually this is how I bought this. Um, I went to the Elemis launch and then I went to a Guardian masterclass and I had time in between so I ended up going to Foils and bought some books. And um, This is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshbeg. I have been wanting to read this for such a long time. Um, I did hear it mentioned on the high-low. Like I said, it's lethal for book lovers. We are going to part with our hard-earned cash because we love these things. Um, but from what I gather, this is set in a pre-9-11 New York and it's basically she is having a breakdown and I don't believe the main character's ever actually named but she's she's going through a severe sort of bout of depression she's not working anymore and I've read the first page and that is pretty evident from the first page um, and I'm really really looking forward to read this apparently it's phenomenal I've um, bought a couple of Otessa Moshfeg's books before I have them on my kindle I am waiting to read them I need to just start reading because I have so many books to get through, so many. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited for this. I think it'd be fantastic if the, if the reviews are anything to go by. This is a brilliant book, so I will keep you posted. Hopefully me doing this video will give me some accountability and I will actually read the books. I am saying I will because <laughs> If not, what a waste of money. But no, I really do want to read this. I'm very excited for it. And I just think it looks beautiful. I think I, I, I love the cover. Again, shouldn't judge books by their covers, but I do and we all do. That brings me to my last book and that is The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. I have heard Nancy Mitford's name mentioned in a number of podcasts, one, is the Lauren Bravo episode of Sentimental Garbage, which is the first ever episode and remains my favourite. It is fantastic. And also your booked, Daisy Buchanan talks about it a lot. And basically, I think this is kind of sort of, from what I gather, a set in sort of like the 40s, 50s time. And it's basically about this family. They are, um, Linda is the main character and she's basically obsessed with sex and looking for love in sort of post-war Britain. Um, first of all, that cover is stunning. Second of all, I have gone to buy this book so many times. Um, I work as a journalist and sometimes journalists have bad days because writing is hard. 
and on those days in my lunch breaks I tend to go and look at books. Now I'm sure there's a deeper psychological reason in that I'm struggling with words so going to look at words is a soothing activity potentially. I think it's that I just like to go and look at books and spend money when I'm in a bad mood and I have gone to buy this book so many times I've heard really good things about it um apparently it's quite comparable to The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets by Eva Rice which was one of my absolute favorite books from last year and I would recommend that to anyone it's phenomenal and apparently this is um this was inspired The Lost Art of Secrets I'm just going to start that sentence again because I am not speaking very well. Apparently this was a big influence on the lost art of keeping secrets and there's a lot of um, inspiration drawn from this and even there's a very 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 minor character called Nancy in the lost art of keeping secrets and when I say minor I mean literally mentioned in a sentence it's like if you want to talk about books wait till Nancy gets here that is the sentence and uh, it's apparently that's a real nod to Nancy Midford so I haven't read any of her work um, and I'm very excited to get stuck into this but I bought this because of the cover because the one I have been visiting to buy in Waterstones isn't as pretty as this this is gorgeous the only um the only downside to it is um I organize my books by color as you can probably see over there um it's completely useless incredibly satisfying and visually stunning um and I have no idea where this will live on the shelf I just don't know luckily that's not my only bookshelf by the way I do have another one big one over here um if you ever do want to see a bookshelf tour let me know and I might do it although they're quite a bitch to film from what I gather anyway very excited to read this I feel like this is going to fall somewhere between sort of Dodie Smith's I Kept the Castle and sort of Jane austen -y Pride and Prejudice kind of vibes um lots of sisters from what I gather and a big family so very exciting I'm looking forward to reading that oh I don't want the pile to fall so like I said these books have been sort of accumulated since before Christmas I think I just when I get paid I think I just I'm going to buy all the books I've been thinking about so I reckon I buy maybe two or three books a month and it is ridiculous that I'm not reading them but the only reason I'm not reading them is that I am reading about a million other things it doesn't help that I keep listening to podcasts all about books like the three main offenders are the high low sentimental garbage and you're booked they're all fantastic they are all sort of run by these really smart like badass women who I just want to be like when I grow up except we're the same age but whatever Shh. um and they just make me want to read everything so I will I literally have a list of books on my phone and I tick them off as I buy them but it's now getting to the actual reading which I need to make time to do so I think I will probably finish the book I'm reading and then I might start Joel Golby or Emma Morgan oh, I don't know I don't know which one I'm gonna read next sorry about my um, minor breakdown there uh, it's a very first world problem I'm aware uh, Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for making it to the end. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you have any book recommendations for me. And also let me know if you'd like me to link my Goodreads. Now I'm rubbish with Goodreads, but I will up my game if it's something people are interested in. So let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, share, ring the bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.